Now, uh, we've seen a tremendous groundswell for the uh, people in the Bonnier. Uh, a lot of support, public support in the civil rights sector, um, a lot of marches, a lot of speeches. But we really have not seen a groundswell of support uh, or sympathy for the horrible torture and murder of Ilan Halimi. Why is that? Ah, uh, this is very, very serious. Uh, it only came to me after a while because I'm following events, so I wrote about that terrible, terrible murder. And then I was following the anti CPA uh, movement. And then suddenly it came to me, I think when I was giving a talk recently, and I said, why do the young people think that their lives were so threatened by that contract? And they don't know that their lives and their future and their existence is threatened by the abduction, torture, and murder of Ilan Halim. Mm. This is terrible, and it has to do with the media, the way the media covered the events. There was some truth, because anti-Semitism is always pushed to the side, and we never saw it, came forward. But immediately there was this kind of discussion, well, it wasn't really anti-Semitic or not that anti-Semitic, and after all, all it was is that they thought Jews have money. It's not true. There's plenty of evidence now. Now, the, the abduction and the torture uh, and the murder of Ilan Halimi in a normal residential building mm. where normal people live, mm -hmm. uh, it's not some sordid place where down-and-outers are hanging out, 20 people, more than 20, directly involved, another 20 indirectly involved. How many others who knew about it and didn't say anything, the way people knew about the death camps and didn't say anything? The, the way they dehumanized this young man, that he was the first day. Huh? They are supposedly kidnapping him and they want money. Mm. And the first day they send a picture to his family, he is totally wrapped up in duct tape. Mm. He's not blindfolded. His eyes are covered with duct tape. Mm. He mm. had a little hole to breathe and a little hole for straw. That's the nourishment he got. Mm. The details are unbearable to tell. He was little by little by little tortured in every way. When you read the death camp stories and you read the, all the different ways that people were tortured, all uh, not having a place to go privately to the toilet, not being able to wash themselves. All of those kind of things were done systematically by more than 20 people. And they, some of them went to work and then came home and then did Continue. their part of it. Um, the police didn't know how to handle it because they were handling it like a kidnapping for ransom. Mm. And quite a bit of that information came out. But... The reaction was a little march, 50,000 people or 80,000 people, most of them Jews, and then got pushed off the front page because there was the bird flu and then the anti paper. Nothing, nothing to make people understand that a society in which someone thinks they can do that to Jews, no one is safe, and nothing to help them understand that the climate was created so that those people thought they could do that to Jews and that Jews deserve it. Clearly you feel that Jews are in danger not only in France but throughout Europe or many other countries? I mean, we know we're going through one of those periods where Jews are in danger. Mm -hmm. I can't go into why I think Jews are put into danger repeatedly. My m most important thought is that we have all the means today to defend ourselves. And we have a solemn responsibility to do it. We are not in a shtetl with barely enough to eat and no access to the general public and, and, and an image, a uh, terrible image. We have power, we have money, we have communications, and we have Israel. Yes. And only if our minds are confused will we not use these things. No, wor nobody in the world needs another Shoah. That yeah. would be a disaster. <laughs> I mean, that's a silly word to use, right? Shoah is already. Mm -hmm. History cannot forgive that. So we have a solemn responsibility to use all the means we have now, today, to make sure it doesn't happen. 
Many people will watch this show and call both of us Islamophobes. Are we? Uh, we certainly are not. Uh, any criticism I make, I think if anybody watches, listens to what I said, reads what I wrote, I am criticizing what some people are doing. Okay? Now, uh, there's a more subtle argument. Somebody will say to me, yes, but so I'm criticizing what Israel is doing. Yes. And my answer is, yes. But you know what? Sometimes people are separated. There's me, and there's you, or there's them, and there's us, and I'm defending something. I'm not ashamed to say I'm defending something. Mm -hmm. I'm defending values. I'm defending my own people. Mm -hmm. If every people defends its own people, that's not bad. Okay. I care about all people. I don't do anything to harm people. Even if I thought something bad about all Muslims, mm -hmm. even if I did, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go around to do something to harm them. Mm -hmm. I only react if um, an Islamic movement is acting politically and militarily to destroy me, as an American, as a woman, as a Jew, as a resident of France. So you think a divorce between the Palestinians and the Israelis is fine at this point? Every time there's an atrocity against Jews because they're Jews, it weighs as much as the Shoah. And it's not just about Jews, and it's not just that it bothers me because it's happening to Jews. I have a special responsibility to defend Jews, and doing so, I defend values that will defend other people. There was, there was a boy from Florida who was maimed in the last terrorist attack in Israel. Mm. So whatever, I mean, another kind of country would have just bombed all the Palestinians, mm -hmm. and later, you know what, you do that, and then later people can say whatever they want. Mm. But it's done. Yeah. That's not our way, and we don't do it. Okay, so the Israelis are saying, we tried to live in peace, it didn't work, now we want a security barrier because you're blowing up our children and our cities. Yes, and that won't and, be uh, enough, but... Okay, and yeah. some people argue about where that line should be, a few miles this way, a few miles this yes, way. Yes, yes. And that's already no, a different problem. Should be a few miles that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's really wrong with a security barrier? You know... On a border, some kind of, it's you know, kind of where it's supposed to be. They can talk about barriers. I said about the decision of the in Court of Justice yeah. that, haha, -ha, when they made that decision about the wall, the barrier, yes. the security the barrier Hague. at the Hague, you couldn't go in the courtroom without going through the checkpoint. Yes. In France, they attacked the Sorbonne. So then the police put a barrier in front of the Sorbonne, so they attacked the police in the Place de la Sorbonne in front of it. They uh, burned a cafe, restaurant, bookstore, and everything. Yeah. And I was there when the riot police rolled in a security barrier. Yeah. And now you couldn't get to the Place de la Sorbonne either. It's funny how right. people's opinions change when it's their children being blown up in discotheques, beaches, boats, planes, streets, caves. It's funny how those events make people think of security. It's no, it's no gift to anyone no, to allow not. that. Yes. Now, you feel Americans can help France and Europe with the current situation. What really do you want to say to Americans as far as how we can help? Uh, it's no use to just laugh at what's happening to French people. They can be arrogant, but of course I know a different side of France. They can be wonderful and marvelous and lovable. And um, it's very dangerous to think that what's happening there has nothing to do with what's happening here. Hmm. Uh, jihad conquest is a historical reality and a contemporary reality. And mm -hmm. it has a different form in every country. It has a different form in France, from England, from Spain, from Italy. And it has a different form in the United States. So Americans have a lot to learn. American Jews have a lot to learn from what's happened in France, that in six years you can go from screaming mort aux juifs in a pro-Palestinian demonstration in Paris to abducting, torturing, murdering a Jewish young man in Paris. Mm. Uh, this kind of what I, it's a sort of kind of silly, you know, it's a silly so-called pro-Palestinianism 
that's no, they don't really care what happens to them. The re when today when Palestinians are killing Palestinians, the tears have dried up. So um, mm -hmm. these silly kinds of, of, um, of uh, thoughtless so-called humanitarian um, movements and ideas are very dangerous and they're, they've done great damage in Europe and they're doing great damage in the United States. How so? Where is the damage from the jihad in the it's United States? It's to ignore uh, life realities like that. You have to defend yourself when you're attacked. Mm -hmm. It's to call Islamophobia when you say, I don't want Sharia law in mm -hmm. France, or I don't want Sharia law in Denmark, or even in one neighborhood mm -hmm. in Canada. 